And then uh, there's also the problem of genocide and imperialism. Now, in the case of all of these uh, features, a totalitarian regime uh, may or may not uh, have genocide. In other words, uh, in, obviously in the case of uh, Nazi Germany, there was a genocide. But other totalitarian systems uh, may not necessarily feature genocide. But uh, we, it is often um, uh, found in that case. Also in the case of imperialism, uh, many totalitarian systems have had expansionist ambitions, but not all. And then on the other uh, side of the coin, uh, some uh, non-totalitarian systems have also committed genocide or uh, have had Im imperial ambitions. Today, however, uh, as uh, you know, Freedom House has documented, Freedom House is a think tank in the United States which has tracked uh, the relative freedom in the world for, for many years. They've found that there's been a decline of democracy, uh, that uh, authoritarian systems are beginning to return. And Africa has not been immune from this. Uh, back in the United States, uh, the um, books such as uh, George Orwell's 1984 or Aldous Huxley's Brave New World have become increasingly popular. And, and people are becoming much more concerned about uh, the rise of these kinds of systems. So, in the case of Africa, uh, I think we can step back and uh, look at how totalitarianism has been present. Hannah Arendt, uh, in her book, uh, The Origins of Totalitarianism, uh, locates the beginnings of modern totalitarianism, in fact, in Africa. Uh, the German genocide in Namibia uh, around the turn of the century, the last century, uh, was an experiment in genocide. Uh, much of the population was wiped out. Uh, in the case of uh, Belgian Congo as well, a massive genocide was, was perpetrated. Something like two-thirds of the population uh, was wiped out uh, due to the uh, uh, rubber trade and other forms of exploitation by the Belgian colonists. And of course, uh, in the case of uh, Eritrea, uh, Mussolini's uh, fascist uh, government took over and in many respects tried to establish a kind of fascist uh, system in Italy. This was all during the colonial period. Hannah Arendt uh, cites the uh, experiment in using race and bureaucracy as a means of control. In other words, a very small handful of people uh, were able to uh, use bureaucracy and terror in order to establish control. And this was the model that was used later by uh, Hitler and Stalin uh, in uh, establishing their systems. In the post-independence period, however, uh, most political scientists have uh, not uh, found any uh, sort of indications of totalitarianism in Africa. Uh, 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 Grundy, for example, uh, uh, has surveyed uh, the African political systems and uh, has felt that uh, Africa lacked the sort of um, uh, advanced technology uh, that was required, uh, for example. It was too heterogeneous. Uh, for many reasons, uh, he felt that uh, Africa was just not fertile territory for a totalitarian system. Of course, uh, in the independence uh, era, there were many uh, socialist experiments. Uh, the African continent was divided between uh, the regimes such as uh, Mali and Benin, Congo Brazzaville, versus the Western-oriented uh, regimes such as Nigeria, uh, Liberia, and some others. But none of these uh, socialist experiments really came to the level of uh, the uh, total control 
of uh, totalitarianism. There were also right-wing dictatorships, which were very, very repressive. Uh, uh, some uh, quite extreme, such as uh, Bokassa in Central Africa Republic, Idi Amin in Uganda, uh, or Mobutu in uh, uh, Zaire. I've uh, just given a lecture uh, at uh, the um, uh, university uh, about uh, Africa's totalitarian temptation. Uh, you know, my uh, basic thesis uh, has been that uh, there are some governments in Africa that uh, have all of the essential features of the classic uh, totalitarian systems that we know from, uh, you know, the Cold War. Uh, but um, uh, I think that uh, they are uh, different in some respects, uh, that uh, they uh, do pose a challenge to the democratic uh, countries uh, because uh, these new totalitarian systems have proven to be quite successful economically and have been able to uh, establish a certain degree of stability and uh, security, uh, whereas the democratic countries in Africa uh, remain beset by uh, all kinds of problems, corruption, poor governance, uh, and insecurity. And so I think that if we are going to uh, preserve these democratic systems, if we value these systems, then uh, more needs to be done to make them work uh, so that they are able to deliver uh, to their uh, citizens uh, the kind of um, uh, good government and uh, st stability that uh, they deserve. Well, I think many people uh, are beginning to uh, see things that way. Uh, of course, uh, I personally uh, feel that uh, democracy is a better system uh, and that uh, freedom, uh, human rights, uh, and, uh, you know, the ability to uh, change the government uh, if uh, I don't like the one that exists is, is something that uh, is worth uh, preserving and, and fighting for. Uh, but, you know, there are many people uh, increasingly that uh, see this totalitarian model uh, as being an alternative uh, that, uh, you know, perhaps it's a, a trade-off uh, that uh, they're willing to make, to give up their freedom so that they can have the sort of uh, economic uh, benefits that the totalitarians seem to offer. So would you recommend totalitarianism for Nigeria? No, of course not. I think uh, Nigeria has made some progress. It still has a long ways to go. There are you know, certainly uh, many flaws uh, with the system. It's very fragile. Uh, but I think that uh, Nigerians, uh, you know, those that I know, uh, value the freedom that they have here. And I don't think that uh, they would, uh, I don't think that totalitarianism would be successful here. Uh, I think that uh, it can often make promises. Uh, you know, maybe it could uh, establish a certain degree of order. Maybe there would be some short-term uh, economic benefits. Uh, but I think uh, in the long term that uh, the, um, by, by giving up your freedom, uh, you're uh, giving up something that's, you know, even much more precious. Nigeria is a very diverse society. So authoritarian trappings can never work in Nigeria because of the diversity of its peoples. And uh, of course, there will always be authorita authoritarian temptations. But Nigeria is so diverse that that diversity has a way of undermining territorial, I mean, authoritarian or totalitarian intrusions. But we've been seeing this come to play in on one or two occasions. Yes, but Nigerian people eventually triumph over them. We saw General Sani Abacha, we saw General uh, Babangida, even Gawon, when he refused to implement a transition program to democracy, was removed from power. And uh, I think the current regime that is also patronizing his men is also on its way out. I can tell you that I can tell you that Nigerians are fed up and they are mobilizing towards the regime replacement. So are you saying in one word that uh, because President Muhammad Buhari is trying to be a dictator in court by 2019 is leaving the seat of power? He has to leave power. There has to be so much bloodletting under his administration. So we don't want more bloodletting.